Housing charities say the UK is at risk of breaching human rights over a shortage of adequate and affordable housing. Steph, can you tell us more? Yes, good morning to you both. It's an interesting one this one morning, everyone. Yeah, a lack of affordable housing in the UK means that some people are living in substandard homes or even on the streets. That's according to charities including Oxfam, Amnesty International and Save the Children. They're meeting at the United Nations to look at whether the UK is meeting its commitments on things such as health, education and and housing and with me now is Dr Jessie Horman who's written a report on this for the charities good morning to you good morning. how big of a problem is housing in this country well a range of charities including just fair the charity that I've worked for which is the coalition of charities that you've mentioned working on social rights in the UK has um, adequate or I would say accurately characterized the situation as crisis there's a huge lack of affordable housing there's a huge lack of quality housing for example in the private rental sector, which houses an increasing number of people in the UK, 33% of the houses are classed as non-decent, which means they're really not fit to live in. They're just not safe. They're not habitable. Um, and that's a shocking situation for a country as rich and, and fortunate as this to be in. Mm. Um, maybe 200,000 families are living with another family in a, in a situation of hidden homelessness. So they have no right to the housing they live in, and they can be um, evicted, basically, by friends or family when those people can no longer... Um, it can no longer live with them. There's a real lack of investment in social housing, which provides a real um, safety net and a really important stopgap for people who can't afford the market rates. And, and it's well known now that the affordability problem across the UK um, is just really outrageous. And in England, across England, all but a handful of regions of England are classed as unaffordable, which is determined by calculating the cost of housing by seven times the annual income. So the housing, people can't afford to buy housing. Private rents are really expensive and social housing just isn't available. Uh, there's some points I want to pick up on that. But first of all, let's hear from Nigel, because he's living with his three children in emergency accommodation in Berkshire. We've been living in a bed and breakfast for nine months. We're now in emergency housing for 11 months. My children don't like it, living so far away from their schools because we're quite away, they've got no friends to play with. Um, we're cramped, really cramped, with only two bedrooms and we'd like to decorate and stuff like that. It would be a lot nicer when we do get our own place. You know, I'd feel a lot better then. But even if getting a decision off the council to tell us what's happening would be nice. Now the government says that they've invested a billion pounds in terms of helping prevent people who could have become homeless. They say, um, you know, they've got Britain building again with housing completions at the highest annual level since 2009. So why do you think we have this problem? Well, it's a decades-long disinvestment in housing overall and social housing as one element of that. And the estimates are from across a range of experts that we need 250,000 homes per year. And that's more than double what is actually being built at the moment. So it's an enormous short, shortfall. It's not something that can be put down to one administration. This has been going on for decades. So although there is some investment, at the same time, the you know, homelessness is rising. So people living on the street are at a very high level, and the level is increasing every year over the last five years. And yet frontline services, hostels, and night shelters, there's a disinvestment from them. So this billion pounds is just not enough. Um, there are many ways that the government could go about this, but I think that what's really needed is a sea change in the way that we see housing, so that it's something about people and the people who need to live in the housing. This is not about bricks and mortar. This isn't about stimulating the economy. This is about social inclusion. This is about children being able to be at the schools where their friends are, where their social networks are, so that people can be at home. That's the real meaning of housing, I think. It, to, to have all that, though, it does sound very expensive, doesn't it? It would involve a, an awful lot of investment, and the government say that they are doing that, and obviously we've got a deficit in this country. So there's a lot of work to be done, really, and that is going to be costly. Well, in some ways, yes, although some of the policy choices that the government has made have made it more expensive for themselves. So, for example, the cost of helping people to pay their rent in private rental accommodation Private rental accommodation, the rents are twice as high as they are in social housing. So if the government has to provide money for people to support people to live in private rental accommodation, they're paying money out, but they're not investing in social housing. When they used to invest in social housing, then that money stayed in the government sector and could be, you, you know, that housing infrastructure was there okay. for more families in the future. There's a lot more we could talk about on this, but thank you very much for your time this You're morning. Welcome. That's it for me.
Thank you, Steph.